Shri-prabhu-pāda-ki-jai-jai-om-viṣṇu-pāda-paramahamsa-hari-vrāja-kacharya-shtatā-kur-ki-prem-se-gaho-sri-kṛṣṇa-chaitanya-prabhu-nity
All glorious to the assembled devotees. All glorious to Sri Guru and Guranga. All glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Nama Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale. Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Vacharine. Nevase Shashanyavari Pastichadi Shatani. Welcome everybody this morning. Thank you for joining us for this very auspicious occasion of the appearance day of Lord Nishingadev. Um, now, is somebody going to translate? You, Jyoti, you're going to translate for Lalita Prabhu? Anybody else need a translation? Are we okay? We're okay. You can, if I speak slowly, you can do it in it with, you can do it simultaneous, more or less. Can? Okay. Jai, Lord Nishingadev, appearance day, ki jai. It was, you may have noticed we sang this prayer just now, which most of us are familiar with, and you're probably, probably aware that this <coughs> prayer was actually recited by Prahlad Maharaj. This is described by Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. This prayer is a prayer of Prahlad Maharaj, which you'll find in the Vishnu Purana. As in, I was wondering where the origin of that prayer was. I'm, maybe many of you know already, I don't know. But I didn't know. So I was interested when I read that in the Chaitanya Bhagavat. So I thought we would put it in, because it's Prahlad Maharaj's prayer on this auspicious occasion. Yay. Now, what's on the board now? Is it Lord Nishingadev Appearance Day? Okay, just want to make sure we're in sync. Jai. Shri Nishinga, Jai Nishinga, Jai Jai Nishinga, Paladesha, Jaya Padma, Mukha Padma Bringa. Some of us are familiar with this, especially if you've been in Mayapur, where Lord Narsingadev, deity, every day the devotees will sing this prayer to Lord Narsingadev. All glorious to Lord Narsingadev. All glorious to Lord Narsingadev, who is the Lord of Prahlad Maharaj, and like the honey bee, is always engaged in beholding the lotus-like face of the goddess of fortune. And that's from the, um, spoken by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And you will find that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, is a prayer of Lord Nishingadev, to Lord Nishingadev, when um, the Lord would enter the temple of Jagannath. There is a deity of Lord Nishingadev as you go in. We, I've never seen, I've never been in. But apparently there's a, on the left-hand side a deity of Lord Nishingadev, and Lord Chaitanya would utter this prayer as he would pass by Lord Nishingadev, entering into the Jagannath temple. Before I forget, I don't know um, who dressed the deities today, but it's one absolutely wonderful, and the outfit is absolutely wonderful, I think. Vishesha, your Daughter designed the dress, is that right? Thank her very much. Absolutely beautiful. And the devotees who dressed their lordships today, I know. I don't know who dressed. Who dressed today? Nandini. Krishna Bharam. Pardon? Ram Vijay, well, fantastic. Thank them all very much. If they're, I'm not sure if they're here, maybe not. Anyways, absolutely stunning. And of course, Lakshmi Nishinga, a big thanks to Nishinga Nanda Prabhu for serving Lakshmi Nishinga so devotionally over decades and 
giving us this opportunity today to have their merciful glance, their merciful association. So, I think most of us know this, this one, we'll sing this. And it's interesting because this prayer is also chanted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he would enter into the Jagannath temple. We sometimes think it's from the Das Stotra, um, I think Das Avatar Stotra, the Das Stotra, Avatar Stotra, uh, by Jayadev Goswami. But this first one, this first part, the second part is, but the first part is not mentioned there. This is sung by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Let me put the cartels. Does anyone recognize the deity there? Beautiful deity of Lord Narsingadev. It's Indrajuna Maharaj's deity, isn't it? I think so. No? Whose deity is it? That's yeah, a beautiful deity. Hmm. Namaste Narasringahiya Namaste Narasringahiya Pallada Lada Dainane Kiranya Kashi Porvaksha Shilatanka Nakalaye Tona shing ho para tona shing ho. Yato yato yamita tona shing ho. Bahirna shing ho. Hridaye Nashing Ho Nashing Ho Madam Shadanam Prabhupada That's from the Nashinga Purana but sung also by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. Um, what's on the board now? Sunny, it's not in sync with my computer. I don't know what you've got there. I don't know where it's... Okay, maybe it is. Let me see. Okay. So this is from the Dasavatar Stotram, Jayadev Goswami. Tava kara kama lavare na kama bhuta shingam Dalita hiranyakashipu tano bringam keshavadrita narahari rupa Jaya Jagadi Shahare Jaya Jagadi Shahare Jaya Jagadi Shahare Tavakara Kamala Hare Nakama Bhutta Shinga Dalita Hiranya Kashipo Tano Bringa 
केशवेता नरहारे रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे केशवद्वीत नर हरे रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे ईशावरीथ नर हरे रूप जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे श्री नृसिंहदेव भगवान की श्री प्रहलाद महाराज की हरे कृष्णा ट्रांसलेशन ओ केशव ओ लॉर्ड ऑफ द यूनिवर्स ओ लॉर्ड हरि हु हैव असुम्ड द फॉर्म ऑफ हाफ मैन हाफ लायन ऑल ग्लोरियस टू यू जस्ट एज वन कैन इजली क्रश अ वास्प बिटवीन वन्स फिंगर नेल्स सो इन द सेम वे द बॉडी ऑफ द वास्प लाइक डीमन इरानी काशीपु हैज बीन रिप्ड टू पार्ट by the wonderful pointed nails on your beautiful lotus hands <laughs> i offer my most humble obeisances to lord narsinghadev who gives joy to palad maharaj and whose nails are like chisels on the stone like chest of the demon hiranyakashipu lord narsinghadeva is here and also there wherever i go lord narsinghadev is there He is in the heart and is outside as well. I fully surrender unto Lord Narsinghadev, who is the origin of all things and is the supreme refuge. So these two prayers were given. Hare Krishna. We were just mentioned discussing the beautiful deity outfits and the beautiful de- how wonderful they look today. Thank you, Sita. You dressed Radha Madhava Govinda Madhava today. Eh? Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So Prabhupada gave these prayers early days of Iskam after he fell sick um serious heart attack and he was sick and he gave these prayers for protection not just physical protection that's there protection of the movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement and the protection of our devotional creepers is interesting lord narsinghadev after he tears apart the stomach of hiranyakashipu and wears the intestines as a garland around his neck the intestines of describe i think bhakti siddhanta maharaj describing that the intestines of hiranyakashipu who was the personification of the most formidable the most formidable obstacle on the path of spiritual life this attachment to sense gratification are represented by the intestines of hiranyakashipu and lord narsinghade rips rips them out from his stomach and he wears them as a garland around his neck so in this way we're taking shelter of lord narsinghade um we can become freed of the formidable enemies on the path of devotional service we we'll hear more about that in a minute from shri bhakti vinod sakur um but this is um a special mercy of lord narsinghe dev that he clears our path sometimes especially hindus they 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 worship lord ganesh who is known and even prapa describes this in various places nectar devotion various places how lord ganesh 
is a remover of obstacles on one's path. But Lord Ganesh is also a devotee of Lord Nishingadev. Hmm. Hare Krishna. What is that? If we need it, we'll use it. If we don't, we won't. Is it? Maybe we need it. I'm a little tired. Can you hear at the back or not? So please don't use it because it's making an awful sound. Who's there? Is someone playing around with it? Or is it just happening? Pardon? Somebody? Gandharvika? Can we forget it? Um, so, maybe that was Lord Ganesh there, I don't know. <laughs> with his trunk, it sounded like an elephant. Um, so he's also a worshipper of Lord Nishingadev. And if we worship Lord Nishingadev, obstacles can be removed. Like everything in devotional service, time is an element, quality is an element. And what it means um, to say, say, get the mercy of Lord Nishingadev um, may not always be quite what, in our conditional perspective, that we visualize. We tend to see things from a material perspective. Um, even in our devotional activities, many times, we still have our material conditional perspectives, um, our concepts and so on, our perception of devotional service, our perception of what it means to be protected in a higher level, it's to release us from the causes of our bondage in this material world. And even more than that, is to establish our, our relationship with Krishna, ultimately. But Lord Nishingadev, particularly, is very important for devotees, aspiring devotees, those who are aspiring to become Vaishnavas, aspiring to become devotees is a very um, important aspect. Sometimes Gaudiya Vaishnavas um, are criticized, and sometimes even amongst Gaudiya Vaishnavas there's criticism, of uh, what has this got to do with the worship of Radha and Krishna? Well, it's got a lot to do with the worship of Radha and Krishna. We'll find out in a minute. Ugram Bira Mahavishnum Jolantam Savato Makum Nishingham Vishnum Badram Mityur Mityam Namam Yaham. I think we recognize the deity of Lord Nishingadev. Um, I bow down to Lord Nishinga, who is ferocious and heroic, like Lord Vishnu. He is burning from every side, flames coming out. He is terrific. I think there's a, there's a, 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 I've seen a picture of the, of the Lord Nishingadev in Mayapur looking like this, but I couldn't find it last night when I was doing this, putting this together. Um, he is terrific, auspicious, and the death of death personified. Or one, or who can overcome death? He's the death of death personified. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Vagisha yasya vadane lakshmir yasya chavakshasi yasya ste hridaye samvittam nishingham aham bhaje. Lord Nishingadev is always assisted by Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and he is always embracing to his chest the goddess of fortune, Mother Lakshmi Devi. The Lord is always complete in knowledge within himself. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Nishingadev. And that verse is compiled by Sridhar Swami on his commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.87.1. Pulada vidaya ladam bhakta vidya vidaranam Sharadindu ruching bande parindra varanam harim. Let me offer my most humble, respectful obeisances unto Lord Nishingadev, who is always enlightening Pallad Maharaj within his heart and who always kills the nescience that attacks the devotees. His mercy is distributed like the moonshine, and his face is like that of a lion. Let me offer my most 
humble obeisances unto him again and again. Also commentary of Sridhar Swami on Srimad Bhagavatam 111. Ugra pyanugra eva yang svabhaktanam rikeshari keshari vasvapottanam anyesham ugra vikramaha Although very ferocious, the lioness is very kind to her cubs. Similarly, although very ferocious to non-devotees like Hiranyakashipu, Lord Narsingadev is very, very soft and kind to devotees like Pallad Maharaj. Um, and that was quoted by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela. And it's actually also commentary of Sridhar Swami on Srimad Bhagavatam. So it appears that Sridhar Swami was very much a devotee of Lord Narsingadev. Many times he's praying of various prayers in his commentaries to Lord Narsingadev. So we're now going to chant a couple of famous verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, which are very appropriate to our own efforts to become devotees or whatever. This one is in the fifth canto, 18th chapter, verse number eight. It's at that time the residents of various planetary systems within the universe are offering their prayers to their worshipable lords. The Lord in the different forms is worshipped by different personalities throughout the universe. And this is from the sector where the residents of Harivarsh are offering their prayers to the Lord and they are worshippers of Lord Nishingadev and they are headed by Pallad Maharaj. Um, so Pallad Maharaj is offering this prayer and we can chant it together, it's quite one. All at the same time, it'll be difficult to chant it line by line. So all together if you wish to join us. Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya Namaste jas tejase avir avir bhava vajra nakka vajra dangshra karma shayan randaya randaya tamo grasa grasa om swaha abhayam abhayam atmani bhuyishta om shraum Powerful mantra. Pallad Maharaj says, I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Narsingadev, the source of all power. O my Lord, who possesses nails and teeth, just like thunderbolts, kindly vanquish our demon-like desires for fruitive activity in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance so that, by your mercy, we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. Are you translating from after? So this is a very important, you could say, um, for all of us, that as long as we still have anarta, material attachments, various kinds of, let's say, tenances, desires within our heart to enjoy the material world separately from Krishna, then the awakening of pure devotional service will not take place. We may hear it, but we will not be able to at all understand, realize or enter into it. The heart has to be cleansed. Lord Narsingadev especially, not just to protect the devotees in terms of difficulties which we may face as a movement, as in our own lives in various ways, but the removal of anartas within our hearts. We see in the Krishna book, in the Bhagavatam 10th canto, that much of the early pastimes of Krishna are focused around killing demons. And then simultaneous, you could say, but uh, especially early on, many demons are being killed. These demons have to be killed, 
They represent various anartas within our hearts. Similarly, Lord Narsingadev is very keen to protect his devotees as he protected Pallad Maharaj at the right time. You could say he could have done it earlier. We were having a wonderful um, reading last night of, of, uh, regarding um, uh, Jayananda Prabhu. Very wonderful. Um, and so, what we can say, uh, just affecting the heart so much, understanding what pure bhakti is. Um, and one devotee asked a question online, what is, uh, why are you putting through so much difficulty, such a great devotee suffering, such a nasty disease and so on? Why Pallad Maharaj was put through so much difficulty? Hmm? We'll hear that a little bit more, but why? Well, the Lord and his devotees, they have reasons. They're, they have reasons why situations like this occur. It's not karma. Sometimes we think, oh, it was their karma. They must have been sinful. But that's not according to the commentary on the 10th canto. <coughs> there we can read in the 14th chapter. Um, of course, there's a commentary by Sridhar Swami and Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. But there they describe that it's not karma. The Lord makes these arrangements. Sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's because the Lord is simply removing the vestiges of desire from the heart of a devotee by placing the devotee in various difficulties so that they completely surrender to him and give up all idea of solving the problems of life by some material adjustments. And sometimes it is due to the special arrangement of the Lord and his devotees to teach us lessons. Because everyone in this material world is experiencing suffering. This world is Dukkalaya Mashashvatam. We cannot escape it. It's the constitution of this world. Everything has its constitution. Uh, just probably gives the example of everything, even the soul's constitution, we hear that. But every object in this world has its constitution, whether it's sugar or chili or whatever it may be, water, constitution. Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj says that the constitution of this material world is turbulence, turbulence and annoyance. It doesn't ever stop. It's always troublesome. And the living entities subjected to the material energy are, are bound up in this material world, and uh, they're, they're constantly being... Um, Harassed, you could say, by their own choice. It's not by chance, as some people say. By their own choice. They're being harassed by the material energy, you could say that. But actually, it's not being harassed. A, a criminal may think they're being harassed by the police force. They may, and sometimes even a sick patient thinks they're being harassed by the, those who are trying to cure them, whether it's mental or physical. But it's not. It's meant for a curative thing. And especially when devotees apparently go through such sufferings like this, or tortures in the case of Prahlad Maharaj, or Haridas Thakur, sometimes physical, showing the lesson how to take shelter of Krishna in all circumstances. This material world is full of variety of circumstances. They teach us how to take shelter in happiness and distress, not just distress, but in all situations. They're fixed undisturbed by the dualities of this world. That's the lesson. It's the first lesson of Bhagavad Gita, Matrasparshas to Kuntershatoshna Sukadukada. Agamapayano Nityas Tamsa Tikshashra Bharata is the first lesson. It's not something very high in one sense, but it's pretty high for most people. But it's the first lesson of the Gita. So the devotees teach this, to be undisturbed in the sense, in the presence of duality happiness, distress, and so on, heat and cold, all the dualities of this world, they, te they teach. And by hearing about them, it helps us to become a little more sober also, and not so much affected by the dualities of this world. They are always fixed in devotion at the lotus feet of Krishna. They're not disturbed. So Prahlama is a perfect example of this. So that's one of the reasons Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Prabhupada again and again says how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not discuss rasa lila or very elevated subject matters of rasa 
with the common masses, only with very selected devotees who were eligible. He didn't do that. Of course, we can say he left it up to the Goswamis to uh, present this in literary form, which they did. But he himself did not discuss these things. His discussion, even when he was with Gadarda Pandit, his most confidential associate in Jagannath Puri, expansion of Srimati Radharani herself, appearing as Gadarda Prabhu or Pandit in Gorlila. And Gadarda Pandit was daily reciting Srimad Bhagavatam for many hours. Lord Chaitanya would go and hear. And mostly they were hearing the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj. They were hearing the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj. Lord Chaitanya was relishing these. Srila Prabhupada put a lot of time in talking about this pastime of Prahlad Maharaj. In fact, 76 and 77 in Mayapur, we've been every night, well, every night, every other night, discussing the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj and like that for the last few weeks. And uh, Prabhupada spoke on these verses, the prayers of Prahlad Maharaj, on many occasions, but particularly in Mayapur in 76 and in 77, not many, several occasions. They were very important for aspiring devotees to enter into this mood. We can say Prahlad Maharaj was manifesting the mood of a Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakta, one who's trying to you know, practice devotional service in reverence, following rules and regulations, whether that's his constitutional position, but he's manifesting that in this particular way. And that's where we have to reach the higher level of devotional service of Raghunuga Bhakti. We have to go through this process. There is no shortcutting. So the, the pastimes of Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj are very relevant to all devotees. It's not like, oh, these are just for neophytes. Well, you could say that. But Lord Chaitanya was hearing them. Gadarda Pandit was reciting them. He was relishing them. Yeah. So we move on. The mood, this mood of this prayer is to cleanse our hearts. As and until the heart is cleansed, how can we appreciate Radha and Krishna? How can we appreciate pure devotional service? The pure devotional service will not manifest. It's not a mechanical uh, manifestation. So when the heart becomes cleansed and the Lord bestows his mercy, his internal energy mercifully descends uh, and our heart becomes um, saturated in loving devotion. But the heart has to be cleansed first. So this is the process. Part of that process, many other aspects can be there. But in this case, today is Nishinga Day, Lord Nishinga Day's appearance day. So we're focusing in on the special mercy of Lord Nishinga Day. And then the next prayer is beautiful prayer. We can say it together again. Svasya stu vishvasya kala pasidatam Dayantu bhutani shivam mitodiya Manascha badram bhajatadad hoksha jay Aveshatam no matir apyo hoituki So having prayed for one's own purification, as they say, you know, charity begins at home. We've got to, you know, practice what we preach and so on. So if we're not pure in heart, it's very, how can we see purely? How can we behave purely? How can we purely pass on this message? But when the heart is pure, then this mood of compassion, uh, not material compassion only, which most of us have experienced, and most people have some degree at least of material compassion, but spiritual compassion. Material compassion only allows uh, an adjustment to some degree, even that is not independent of karma or independent of the will of the Lord. But to some degree, you could say material compassion evokes the mode of goodness um, and is, you know, in this material world is natural. But it is not the real compassion of a purified soul. That may be there, as you could say, by a secondary thing to lead to the primary one. But the primary compassion is manifest or explained in this verse. May there be good fortune throughout the universe, and may all envious persons be pacified. Oh, I'm not envious, but everyone in the material world is envious. We wouldn't be here if we weren't envious. Because, uh, we may not see like that. 
But within this material world, envy is manifested in different degrees according to the mode of nature which is influencing the conditioned soul. But it's manifest everywhere. Everyone sees themselves in the center and sees objects of this world as for my pleasure. We may, it may be in different ways that we see it like that. It may be a more subtle one, more in the mode of goodness, but it's there even up to the topmost planet, even Lord Brahma manifested envy of Krishna at one stage. Certainly Indra does on occasion. Even on that high level it's there. They're still sometimes forgetting their position. Envy is there of seeing others as objects of my sense gratification. Seeing things with me in the center and not Krishna in the center. Whereas a pure devotee sees Krishna in the center and sees how everything is related to Krishna. Therefore, he has no envy, because he can see how everything is nothing but an expansion of Krishna. And if we're trying to, ex and everything is the property of Krishna, meant to be enjoyed by Krishna, so if we think anything is to be enjoyed by me, it's a, uh, you could say, a manifestation of that original envy of Krishna. We may be directly envious of people in this world, and so on. But any form of sense gratification is a result of that envy of Krishna. That has to be removed. So the pure devotee is asking for that to be removed, or one who is aspiring to become a pure devotee from their hearts. And even the pure devotee never considers that his heart is pure. And he's always praying like this. Srila Prabhupada used to pray, maybe not this prayer, but he would pray to Radharani for this mercy on a higher level. Um, but the devotee is always in this prayerful mood knowing that without the protection of the Lord, we cannot possibly overcome this material energy. This material energy is very hard to overcome. Only those who surrender unto me can cross beyond it. So an important part of devotional service is prayer. But as Queen Kunti says, or she indicates, that our prayers also we have to be um, uh, with sincere feeling. We may not have come to that platform, but at least we can repeat notable prayers of great devotees like Prahlad Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, many Acharyas, who have given us wonderful prayers to help us at different stages of our devotional service. So this certainly is a powerful prayer. And to hear this prayer, we may not be feeling it, but we can follow in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada, of those who are manifesting it. May there be good fortune throughout the universe, and may all envious pe persons be pacified. May all living entities become calm by practicing bhakti yoga, for by accepting devotional service they will think of each other's welfare, their general welfare. Of course, there's an element of, in, the, in, the, in, in the preaching movement of also caring for the body, caring for the, the, the environment, caring for others within the environment and so on, but primarily the only purpose of that should be to release the living entity from their attachment to this world. Yeah? This is the real purpose of, you could say, of, of mercy, of welfare. Not just to make them better within it. To make someone better in the prison. Some people may think that's a good idea. But the real welfare is to release them from the prison and not artificially. <coughs> but in a way that they never have to come back again to this world. So this is the prayer of Pallad Maharaj. Therefore, let us all engage in the service of the Supreme Transcendence, Lord Sri Krishna, and always remain absorbed in thought of Him. This is the way that we get released. We can find in Prabhupada's prayers, in the Markane Bhagavad Dharma, how Sri Prabhupada is praying like this.